Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ba'd. Today I want to talk to you about a very important topic, which I'm sure you will agree with me is important. And that is the art of influencing without authority. The art of influencing without authority. Now, why is that important? Because you don't always have authority but you can always influence. And that is something which is very critical to remember, which is you may not have authority, but you can always influence. To begin, let me start by saying that influence is more about who you are than about what you do. We seem to get caught sometimes in uh, this whole issue of technique and say, how must I say this or what must I do and so on. All of which is important. And I, I don't deny that technique is important. Technique is important. But no technique will work if you and your character is not respected. Therefore, influence is more about you as a person than about whatever technique you might bring to the table. And that is why influence is more about character than about method, than about technique. Behavior matters and not just behavior at the time when you are engaging in this influencing conversation, but behavior all the time. Because people don't care what you, what you say until they see what you do. And that's why I say people listen with their eyes. People are watching you all the time you are not even aware of that, but they are watching you. And it's very important for you to make sure that your behavior is as far as possible impeccable, beyond reproach, all the time. Anyone who is who wants to influence people, it would be a very good idea for them to keep this in mind that you are always 24 seven visible. As far as we are concerned, Muslims, this is a good thing to remember because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching us 24 seven anyway. So keep that in mind and say behavior matters all the time because behavior results in trust and trust is something that is won over a long period of time but can be lost with one single word, with one single incident, with one single way of talking or acting. Now, what are the differentiators? I call them the differentiators that separate the winners from the losers. What are they? There are five. Number one is compassion. And I'm not, I don't mean this in, a, um, in, in any hierarchy. Five things, all of them equally important. Number one, compassion. Number two, passion. Number three, rigor. Number four, relationships. And number five, the willingness to embrace change. All of these are very important. So let us look at each of them very quickly. What is compassion? Compassion in the context of influencing has three components. One is responsibility. Appreciating that it is my job to do something. Take, for example, global warming. You might say, well, you know, the whole world is doing this and so on. What does it matter if I switch off one light? What does it matter if I don't use my car uh, unless it is absolutely required? Uh, what, what does it matter whether I contribute to the carbon footprint or not when the whole world is doing something else? No, you matter, your individual action matters and therefore a sense of responsibility. Number two is concern for others. You want to influence because you want something good to happen for others. That concern, is it genuine? And therefore, are you really willing, seriously, are you willing to work for the welfare of others? And if the answer to that is yes, then comes the, 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 the test and that is, are you willing to put your money and your effort where your mouth is? Or is it only lip service? Oh, fantastic, great idea, wonderful, we should all do it. Who's that we? I. 
unless I can translate that V into I and then follow through with investing time, money, energy and knowledge, it won't happen. Now think about this. Compassion is what makes us human. What is compassion? Compassion is to feel for somebody else when that somebody else is not even related to me. Even animals are kind to their own young. But compassion, feeling for someone who is unrelated, this is very human. And this is what distinguishes us as human beings. Number two, passion. Drive. Seriously ask yourself, how serious are you about wanting to influence? How badly do you want to achieve that? And for me, for the Muslims, I begin with, do you pray tahajjud? And do you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and tahajjud? Because if you say that you want something and you're not praying tahajjud and making dua for it, then you don't really want it. It's as simple as that. As somebody said, the dream is not what you see in your sleep. The dream is what does not let you sleep. So drive, single-minded focus. How much do you really want to achieve that thing? And number two is achievement motivation. It is somebody who, are, who is a winner, somebody who the effort excites. Somebody who wanting to who, who the challenge excites, who looks for big challenges, constantly raises their own bar. Not somebody who is looking for excuses and running here and there. Being motivated by the challenge. So drive and achievement motivation. Number three, rigor. To focus and to stay focused, to remain focused. Now that is very, very important. It's e for, for many people, focusing is also difficult, but even if you are able to focus, it must not be a flash in the pan. It's very important to understand that results come at the end of consistent, sustained effort. They don't just pop up. So focus and keep focused because excuses do not change reality. Number two is benchmark against the best. How do I know I'm doing well? Because I'm benchmarking against the best. If you seriously, if you're not trying to be number one, then you're not trying. Anyone who's complacent, I mean, anyone who says good enough is good enough is already on the losing path. Good enough is never good enough. Good enough means that you're not really doing your best. So focusing by benchmarking against the best in the world. And number three is therefore constantly raise the bar. Challenge yourself because challenge motivates. So constantly raise the bar. I want to remind myself and you that winning is a habit and so is losing. Number four is relationships. Why are relationships important? Because you can never do things alone. We need teams. We can never win on our own. We need teams. We need people to help. You need to have successes. If you want your work to be sustained over time, you need to have successes. So therefore, be thankful. All relationship building begins with being thankful. So be thankful because thanklessness is shamelessness. Be loyal because people, other people were loyal to you. They stood by you, so you stand by them. And as I said before, build teams. Very important to remember, value people, not things. Use things, not people. Final one is embrace change. Being open to new ideas, being open to new methods. Not getting stuck in one way of doing something which you have been doing for a long time. I have been doing this for the last 20 years. That's the reason why you need to change today. Right? So be open to change. What is change? Change is self-development. But remember, change by nature is painful. But change is another name for growth. So have the humility to seek feedback, ask people how you're doing, and then strive to do it better. Remind yourself, change is painful, but so is extinction. So is redundancy. Pick which one you want.
which brings us to influencing skills. Now, answer four questions for yourself. Number one, who do you want to influence? Number two, what do you want them to do? Number three, how does that help you? And number four, how does it help them? Because remember, people don't resist change. They resist being changed. So first question, who do you want to influence? I want you to do this as an exercise. Pick in your mind, who is that person? Somebody you want to influence to give you a job? Somebody you want to influence to marry you? Somebody you want to influence to permit their son or daughter to marry you? Depending on your culture and so on, that might be a question. Somebody you want to influence to give you a particular position in an organization. What is it? Who is this person? Number two, what do you want them to do? As I said, give you a job, get you married, give you a cup of tea, whatever. Right? What do you want them to do? Remember that these two are very clear. Number who do you want to influence and what do you want them to do? Very, very important to keep this in mind because if you are focused on the wrong person, you're going to waste a lot of effort. And second thing is, if you are not clear about what specifically do you want them to do, you will make all the effort, you'll be successful, and when the person, but you will still leave that person in a, in a quandary, in confusion about what is it you want from them. So the person might say, well, you know, great guy, but what does he want me to do? So very, very clear. These two things. Third thing is, it's an internal thing for you. Be very clear in your mind. How does that help you? This is your motivator. This is your, your drive engine. The, the more you are clear about how it helps you, the more energy and effort you will put into it and the more it will be worth your while to do. So how does it help you? And the fourth one is number one important. How does it help them? I'll come to that in a minute in the next slide, but how does it help them? Why must I just think about this and say, <clears throat> imagine, because in fact, this is happening. I mean, this will happen every single time, but people, may, people are polite, so they won't ask you that to your face. But imagine this person is saying to you, why should I do what you're telling me? Why should I do what you are telling me to do? Right? Just think about that. Why must I do it? As I said before, people don't resist change, they resist being changed. Now, the critical ingredients for influencing. Number one, authenticity. Truthfulness. Play acting doesn't work. Now, the reason I'm saying that is because many people today are very taken up by motivational speakers who are focused on teaching technique. So they will say, do it this way, do it that way. You know, have a big smile on your face. Remember, the smile originates in the heart and the smile is reflected in the eyes. Otherwise, a smile is showing teeth. And mammals don't show their teeth when they are happy. <coughs> Humankind is the only mammal which shows its teeth when it is happy. So you can smile, you can have a big plastic smile on your face. It will look plastic. It will not convince anybody. Because there is no happiness in your heart about that thing you are smiling about. So authenticity, no play acting. Number two, compassion, as I mentioned before, genuine interest in the other person who you want to influence. Number three, we come to that point, which is, how does it help me? This person is asking you this question. Why should I change? Why should I do what you are telling me to do? And that's what I call WIIFM. What's in it for me? And therefore, the key, the key ingredient here is communication. How well can you communicate? Remember, it's not only about words. So don't think that it's communication means that you should be able to give this long, you know, very uh, complex speech and use big words. As a matter of fact, that is a good way of, a good example of how not to communicate. Communication is to speak clearly, is to speak concisely, and it is to touch the hearts of people. 
What's in it for me? Why must I do this? This is the question that somebody is asking you. W-I-I-F-M. That's the FM station everybody listens to. What's in it for me? If you can answer that question for them, what's in it for me? Believe me, that person will come and do what you want them to do. And the last one is track record. How do I know that this will succeed? Why should I trust you? Why should I trust you? I was in Bangalore my first year as a consultant, 1994. I knew nobody. I had no influence. I, uh, my, my previous 16 years, I was in manufacturing. I was not in HR. I was not in finance. The two high profile things in any organization. I was in manufacturing. I was the guy who made the stuff so that people could, uh, so that the organization made money. Then I came into consulting and I, I decided to do leadership consulting. And that's what I've been training for 13 years before that. That's another long story. But so when I came, I settled in Bangalore because in Bangalore uh, was the place in 1990, in the early 90s, so 92, 93, where India had opened its um, it, its policy on, on uh, industry. And we had a lot of multinationals who came and they settled in Bangalore because Bangalore had a lot of pubs. And also because Bangalore, the weather was nice. It was cool weather. So in Bangalore now, I'm trying to hit the street to get some business for myself. And I find that I know nobody. What do I do? Finally, one of my friends said to me that, he said, we have a CEO, we have an American CEO. He's Indian, ethnically Indian ethnic Indian, but born and raised in the US. So he's American completely. Uh, and he is the CEO, he's the president of the company, he's having the, all kinds of difficulties with his immediate uh, team, with his vice president. And uh, if you can help him, he'll be very happy and you know, this would be the wonderful thing to do. And it'll, it'll be a good start for your business. So I said, okay, get me an appointment. I got an appointment, I went to see him. So I suggested to him, I said, you know, this is what we should do, do a, do a leadership workshop and we talk about this and that and so on. I, I, I'm trying to be brief here. He asked me a straight question. He said, how do I know this works? He asked me, what will you charge? And those days it was, you know, it was, the charge was not very high, but it was, uh, you know, a reasonable charge. So um, he said, how do I know this works? So I said to him, even I don't know if it will work, but I think it will work. So let me make a proposal to you. My proposal to you is, let me do this two-day workshop. And at the end of that, you decide, if you think it worked, then I want you to do two things. Number one, I want you to pay my fees. And number two, I want you to recommend me to other people. I said, I'm new in the business. I need recommendations. And the best recommendation is one which comes from the client. So I want you to call up your friends. Who are his friends? CEOs of other companies. Who are my potential clients? So I say, I want you to call, up, call them up and recommend me. Now, he liked that. He liked the spirit. And I said, if you don't like the course, you have to pay me nothing. Right? I walk away. So he liked that idea. He said, very good. And of course, Alhamdulillah, as we say, the rest is history. He loved the course. He did wonderful did great things for him and then he called up people and he was true to his word he paid me my fees and he called up people and recommended me and that is how i set off in my career uh, in uh, in leadership development uh, in the year 1994. so it's very important to be clear in your mind with regard to uh, going forward and in that context reputation is worth more than gold now I'll tell, you another, I'll tell you another story with that. There's another company, a very big multinational, uh, very big Indian multinational, uh, that time based out of Bangalore, IT company, uh, which uh, also had, you know, ha had or has uh, a great reputation for integrity and for uh, fairness and all kinds of stuff. So they called me in. Uh, and remember, this was my first year as a consultant. I was hungry. I was I desperately needed work. 
So these people, they called me, the head of their HR, the head of training, uh, she called me and she said, this is the program we want. So I came in there, I, she explained to me what they wanted. Uh, they wanted a training program to cover 200 managers. And this was like, you know, mana from heaven for me, which is fantastic. 200 managers, uh, 20 people at a shot, that's 10, 10 um, courses, that is 20 days of uh, engagement, which is over a month of work. Uh, you know, fantastic at a time when I was very hungry, I really desperately needed the money. Now, part of the, as a part of the course, um, I, uh, in my design, I designed uh, the Myers-Briggs uh, type indicator MBTI instrument as the, one of the things to use. I had just qualified from uh, Otto Krager in um, Fairfax, Virginia, and uh, so I proposed this. This lady agreed, and uh, we set a date. I went home, I did all the preparation and everything else, and those days, you know, everything was and there was nothing, there was no computers and so on. So everything was printed. So I got a whole bunch of stuff printed and everything else. I did all that. Then two days before the course, the first program is to be launched. She calls me and she says, can you please come and see me? So I said, what about? We we, we are you know, ready to launch. She said, no, she said, no, no, just please come and see me. I said, okay. So I went to see her. She tells me, um, you have ordered, you have designed the MBTI bias brief instrument in this thing. And um, so we have to buy it from the, um, from their authorized dealer uh, because the bias bricks cannot be bought by anybody. It has to be recommended by a trained analyst. In that case, in this case, it was myself uh, from the dealer. And um, so they have to pay for it. And in those days, I think it was a, it was a dollar, a uh, copy or some such thing. I, I, it was, wasn't very expensive. So anyway, so she says, um, why don't you photocopy and use the, use the instrument? And my eyes sort of shot up. I said, here is this lady working for this organization, which, uh, you know, Tom Tom's all over the place about how honest and, and, and uh, high integrity they are. And she's the head of training and she's telling me to, to do something which is illegal. She's theft of copyright. So I, she says, why don't you... Uh, why can't you copy, uh, you can photocopy and use? I said, because it is illegal. It's a violation of copyright. He said, oh, but you know, everyone does it. I said, it doesn't matter to me what everyone does. I do what I consider to be honest. And I said, I do not do dishonest things. She says to me, you know, of course, I appreciate your honesty and so on and so forth. I mean, like hell, she appreciated. But she said I, I appreciate your honesty and so on, but, um, you know, we, we can give you a lot of work. I said, yeah, tell me about it. I said, sorry, I will not use, I will not violate copyright. I will not use, I will not photocopy and use, and I don't care who, who does it. They are not my teachers. As far as I'm concerned, I will not do something which is dishonest. Simple as that. She says, you know, Yavar, you are uh, new in the business and I know this is this work is important for you and so on. Basically, she is trying to tell me you are starving. Here I'm offering you food and you're refusing. I said, I don't care. I said, I don't care. I will not do something which is dishonest. She said, well, you know, in that case, we have to reconsider. Meaning, goodbye. I said, okay, no problem. I walked away. I did not get that work. But believe me, a couple of years later, somebody phoned me, another client, and again MBTI. And uh, then this client said to me, you know, to the dealer, we have to give the my registration number. So I didn't, obviously I didn't remember it, you know, off the top of my head. So I said, look, I'm going to call you back and give you. When I called her back, she said, we already got the instrument. I said, how did you get the instrument? I didn't give you the number. She said, no, 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 when we called them, it was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Oja. May Allah bless his memory. Um, he said, Mr. Oja says, Mr. Beg's name is a brand. If he's doing your course, no problem, we will, we will give you the instrument. So I called Oja and Oja tells me, he says, sir, we respect you. We know about the incident you mentioned. Somebody else told us about that. 
And we know that if you are doing the course, you will never, you know, photocopy and stuff. So your name is a brand. How did that happen? Because of track record. Trust takes a long time to build, but it gets destroyed very easily. So reputation is worth more than gold. If you have a reputation for honesty, if you have a reputation for integrity, if you have a reputation for doing the right thing, believe me, you can influence people. Anything you say, people will accept and they will, they will believe you because they know that they can trust you. All influencing is based on one word and that word is trust. Finally, especially for the Muslims listening to this one, four things. Number one, and all these four because at the end of the day, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does it. And when you ask him, when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the four things which will help. Number one, earn and eat halal. Do not eat doubtful thing. Do not earn from doubtful sources. Earn and eat halal. Number two, istighfar and tawbah. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and clean up your act. Whatever it is you're doing, whatever is wrong, Get it out of the system. You know it is wrong. Don't do it. Clean up your act. Number three, Salah, which is the five times prayer and the Hajjul in the night. Very, very critically important. As I said before, if you if you say you want something and you are not praying the Hajjul and making dua for it, then you don't really want it. If you want it, pray the Hajjul and make dua. And number four, Taqwa and Tawakkul. Taqwa is the concern for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure in everything we say and do. Will Allah be pleased with it? If the answer is yes, we do it. If the answer is no, we don't do it. If the answer is I don't know, then we find out before we do it. Be very clear about that. Taqwa and tawakkul. And tawakkul is to completely and totally trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do what is best for us. Our job to make the effort, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's job to make that effort successful. If it is, good for us. So we turn to the one who can do anything and we seek his help in all that we say and do. And that is the issue of taqwa and tawakkul. So influencing without authority is to build this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of taqwa based on taqwa and tawakkul, based on the concern for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure and based on complete and total uh, trust in him, Jalla Jalalu, and tawakkul, which is complete and total faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Jalla Jalalu. This is the, um, this is what I want to leave with you. And I wish you all the very best to influence the world and influence whoever comes into contact with you to do that which benefits everybody. Thank you very much.